this is used about my channel, and uh, I'm going to respond to a few things before anything. Peace to you, may God save Serbia and Syria. Um, <coughs> the first is, um, well, I guess I'll switch it up. The first is there's a video about this guy who is going to become a priest, and he's from Romania, and the bishop wanted a bribe from him so he could get the best church in, in you know, in the biggest city, and um, he saw that this bishop was corrupt, and oh my god, there's corrupt bishops? No. I mean, you've never heard me criticize a bishop ever on my channel. It's not like I have about 15 videos where I go through and I am, I am extremely harsh upon the Orthodox Church. I, I don't know if harsh is the right word, but we've got to clean up our own house. You don't go and criticize somebody as house is being filthy and dirty when yours is a pigsty. Now, I don't say that the Orthodox Church is a pigsty, but there are definitely less than admirable people inside the organization which is called the Eastern Orthodox Church. Now, are they really part of the church? Or these questions like that? That's up to God to decide. Um, but a corrupt bishop uh, makes you leave the Orthodox Church or you not want to be a priest that should make you want to be a priest even more. Um, and the funny thing is, the guy said, well, the Roman Catholic Church and Eastern Orthodox Church are, this, are sister churches. They both recognize each other, and you can either can take sacraments in each other's churches. The Eastern Orthodox Church doesn't have sacraments. This was a word brought in um, during the time of Peter the not so great in Russia when he had his court dress up like the uh, the court of France and he uh, did away with the old Muscovite crown and he tried to westernize a lot of things and he, just, he even claimed that he'd rather have been a uh, the captain of a British uh, warship than the Tsar of Russia. Yeah, not a very great Orthodox man. He also brought in the Lutherans, too. Thanks! Um, <clears throat> so, no. The Orthodox can't take the sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church, and, and Roman Catholics can't receive the Eucharist in the Orthodox Church. Now, from a Roman Catholic perspective, they're told that they can go and receive communion at these Orthodox churches, but they're not allowed to. They're not allowed to from the, the Eastern Orthodox Church says they're not allowed, but the Roman Catholic Church says, yeah, you can go receive their, their, um, their Eucharist. Similarly, the Anglican Church says you can receive communion at the Roman Catholic Church, but the Roman Catholic Church says, no, they can't. They're not Catholics. They're not allowed to. I've known Anglican priests who've taken communion at the Roman Catholic Church. Why would you want to take communion at a church that you don't confess the same creed? So it's ridiculous. He says the only difference is that, um, well, he says the Pope would be like a prom queen all dressed up, but, you know, the Orthodox patriarch of Romania would be like a rapper. He's all he's decked out in gold and his crown is gold. I mean, he just goes into some ridiculous stuff. He says the only difference between the two is that the Roman Catholics are not allowed to be married. The Roman Catholic priests aren't allowed to be married where the Orthodox priests must be married. This is only partially true. If you're heading a parish strongly suggests that you should be married. If you're not married and you become a priest, uh, you basically become 
eventually become what's called an archimandrite. You uh, reside over a monastery or something like that. You wouldn't necessarily be in a community, uh, a parish that's among, you know, a community. You'd be looking over monks or, or something like this. <coughs> So what the guy said was totally ridiculous, and there was a few things in, in there that clicked that I, and this is in response to Rachel, um, a video that she wanted me to critique, and he said that he may go back, and he says that there's clergy, ex-clergy that are atheists, and there's clergy that are atheists. Sometimes I wake up an atheist, sometimes I wake up a polytheist, sometimes I wake up an agnostic, depends on what hour of the day. But my discipline and my life is devoted to Christ. My loyalty, or as it's translated in English, faith, should be faithfulness, is to Christ and um, His church, the bride. Um, and being part of that bride is walking out the faith. Um, the second response is, I get a response to, I, I was asked the question, you know, uh, about my journey from Islam to Christianity, and I say to this day, I still am a Muslim, there, there's nothing that's going to take that away from me, um, it, it's just who I am. I am a practicing, I'm a believing Christian, and I'm practicing Eastern Orthodox Christian. Um, I guess this would put me in the category of Kufar or apostate, but I don't care. Um, and I was, got words back like bigot and um, idiotic and things like this. It's Or this is the same stuff that, you know, it, it, that, you know, you know, anti-Muslim say this. And I didn't say anything about Muslims in there. Any time I've ever talked about Muslims, it's been glowing praise. Um, I love the Muslim people. I think they're great people. There are some Muslims that are total scumbags. Um, even when I was at the Masjid, there was often talk about the sheikhs and imams that would go out and find prostitutes. Any church or religious organization you're going to be in, there are going to be corrupt people or people who give in to temptation. Um, I guess this leads back to the first thing. This, 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 this fool who claims that he was almost an Orthodox priest um, and that the bishop wanted a bribe. This is, this is silliness. This is, I mean, even... His description of orthodoxy is makes you wonder: Was he orthodox ever? Um, and then he says, "Well," and then he tries to say, "Well, this this one was this this guy wanted a bribe, so how can I trust anyone going so far back? And I wouldn't even trust Jesus' apostles; they probably would want a bribe. And I I wouldn't trust the people who compiled this." this text that we call the New Testament, because they probably wanted bribes, too. Um, really, Athanasius asked for a bribe, one that Athanasius of Alexandria asked for a bribe. Uh, when the Council of Nicaea was held, it was held with people who had blotted out eyes, who had limbs cut off, whose their bones from their feet were falling out because they were, they were, their feet were roasted over fire for them to, uh, to deny Christ. These were people who accepted bribes, who were willing to give up their life for Christ. This is ridiculous. Um, you know, I once met a Muslim who was uh, who was a terrorist. So therefore, all Muslims everywhere, going back to the beginning, were terrorists. Or I must. I once met a Buddhist who was a, uh, a drunk. Therefore, all Buddhists everywhere are drunks. And going back far, even as far back as Siddhartha. Even he was a drunk, and all his followers were drunks. I, I once ran into a, a bishop that wanted a bribe, therefore every bishop everywhere wants a bribe, and asks for bribes, and are dishonest, and 
I'm going to project this back all the way for the 2,000 years of Christianity and say that even the apostles wanted bribes. And even Athanasius and Ignatius of Antioch, Irenaeus of Lyon, uh, Polycarp, Justin Martyr, all of the martyrs, the 40 martyrs of Sebast, all these people, they all wanted bribes. You know, there's accounts of the Roman army bribing people not to be Christians, and then after they rejected it, torturing them, and then killing them. So that kind of refutes his whole stupidity in this matter. As for me being a bigot or whatever, just because I came to Christianity and left Islam because I had studied, um, uh, compared and contrast, uh, this is, I think that's just silly. I don't agree with blind faith. I think blind faith isn't faith. It's just, it's hoping and hope. It's, it's, lunacy, but this is my response to these two things, and um, the rest of the period, I think, will be gone today. Take it easy, peace to you, may God save Serbia and Syria. This is my response video to uh, Rachel, who sent me a video, I guess I'll, maybe I'll attach this as a response video to that guy, speech, and, um, it's also a response video about um, my recent video, Journey from Islam to Christianity, uh, the character of Jesus versus Muhammad, and maybe I might do another one talking about the environments that they lived in, because that, I, I can, again, I, that would take a whole other video. All right, peace to you, may God save Serbia and Syria, and uh, yeah, this guy did not know what he was talking about. Then again, Romania coming out of just communism, and he said Romania was harsh on, on the Orthodox Church. But yet I hear from Romanians that Ceausescu was actually uh, very tolerant of the Orthodox. And All right, whatever. Take it easy. Peace. May God save Serbia and Syria. This has been Yusuf. Extremely harsh upon the Orthodox Church. I, I don't know if harsh is the right word, but we've got to clean up our own house. You don't go and criticize somebody's house as being filthy and dirty when yours is a pigsty. Now, I don't say that the Orthodox Church is a pigsty, but there the bishop wanted a bribe from him so he could get the best church in, in you know, in the biggest city. And um, he saw that this bishop was corrupt and Oh my god, there's corrupt. <coughs> the first is, um, well, I guess I'll switch it up. The first is there's a video about this guy who is going to become a priest and he's from Romania and bishops? No. I mean, you've never heard me criticize a bishop ever on my channel. It's not like I have about 15 videos where I go through and I am... I am ex this is use about my channel. And, uh... I'm going to respond to a few things. Or anything, peace to you, may God save Serbia and Syria. Um, 